Hi guys, so my mom is going to show you how to make clothes. Guys, so today I'm going to show you how to make a pair of bell bottles from scratch. The last video I did, we took a pair of jeans and we added the bell bottoms to the bottom of the jeans. We're not doing that this time. We're going to make a complete pair of bell bottoms using fabric. But we do still need the jeans to use as a pattern, unless you have a pattern already. So we're ready to cut our fabric now. I'm, I have my jeans, I'm doing a size 2T. So grab your jeans, make sure you have enough fabric. Toddler size, I have one yard, so one yard should be fine if you're doing the toddler size. If you're doing adults, get two yards, two to three yards just to be on the safe side. So, we're gonna cut two pieces for the front and two pieces for the back. So what you would do is, I'm folding my front clothes. And make sure they match up, which have your back crotch out. So, since the back is showing, see the back pocket, that means we're cutting the back. Uh, everything is lining up. And we're going to fold our fabric so that we can get two pieces. We're not cutting on the fold. We're just going to have two pieces when we cut. Let's make sure we have enough to fit our pants. Okay. And keep in mind, I'm using a four-way stretch. I always use stretch fabric when doing this. If you use none stretch, then you will have to go based off the measurements to be precise. Or so I have my fabric folded. And make sure when you have it on here, you have enough room on the side for seam allowance, which I do. I have my tape measure. So now what we need to do is find out where we want our belt bottom to start. It can start wherever you prefer it to start. I always do mine five to six inches from the hem. So what I do is fold that up. Fold that up. And this is where I will cut. And make sure you got at least an inch of room at the top. Okay. So basically we're just going to trace around these jeans. And you can do a half an inch seam allowance. So that means cut it a half an inch bigger. If you need to use your tape measure to do your half an inch, you go right ahead. I can eyeball a half an inch. So just cut your back piece. And cut it a half an inch all the way around, except when you get to the top. When we get to the top, we're going to do a whole inch. So do a half an inch around, except at the top, you're going to do a whole inch. And this is for the back. We're cutting the back. So I'm doing and even if your pants they curve because of the elastic, just keep it straight when you get towards the top. Just go straight up. The elastic make it scrunch up if you have elastic adjustable elastic waist. Okay. So I'm gonna start from that top and I'm gonna do my one inch so i can have an inch at the top basically we do the same for the front except in the front i do not leave an extra um half inch seam allowance when i'm at the crotch area like here i did the half inch seam allowance all the way around and then the inch at the top on the front i do not leave the half inch on the crotch area Here's my pants after I traced them. My pants pattern. 
So I always mark it with a pen by putting a pen up in here. That way I will know that this is the back because this, once you cut it, it is easy to um, get the front and back confused, especially when you sew it. So I keep this pen in the back of mine until I'm sewing my tag up in the back. Now I'm gonna do the same for the front. We're gonna put the front on the outside. So now we have our front, pull out the crotch area. And this is the area I say I don't leave extra seam allowance on when I'm cutting around it. And you would cut it the exact same way, six inches from the hem or whatever length that you chose. I make sure I got at least an inch at the top. Okay, so start with our half an inch seam allowance going all the way around till we get to the top and the crotch area. Now, if you do do the half an inch seam allowance all the way around to the crotch area, it's okay, it's not a big deal. Sometimes it be saggy in the front. That's why I don't put the half an inch seam allowance at the crotch area in the front. You can do this with two-way stretch fabric too also. You just have to make sure that the stretch is going that way. So now I'm in my crotch. I'm going to cut it right at, right by the jeans. I'm not leaving no extra. Again, if you leave extra, that's totally fine. Now, cut our um, inch at the top. And you actually could have folded it twice and cut cut everything. Because some people don't um, cut the front and back. They just cut one four times. Now that we have that cut, this is our front. And this is our back. Just lay them on top of each other to make sure that the lengths match if you have one longer then cut them even mine is pretty even Let's see so now we're gonna um cut our bell bottom so the width for the jeans I have six and a half, but take away an inch, that'll be five and a half. Because we did an inch seam allowance all the way around. Yeah, so five and a half for me. I got my jeans and where we folded it up, I had folded it up six inches from the hem. So now I'm just gonna measure the width, which is five and a half, which is right, even if you measure these you would get a half a, you would get a whole inch bigger than the five and a half because we added a half inch on each side which is an inch so this is five and a half so to cut my bill i'm using this cocoa melon fabric if y'all didn't know So to cut our bell, we're gonna do the same thing. Fold our fabric one time. Then I got my fabric folded once. Then we're gonna fold it. Here's my fold. My fold is on that side. See? I'm folding it. Then I'm going to fold it down. And then to get your um, radius, you would do the, we had five and a half when we measured this. So five and a half times two would be 11, right? Five and a half plus five and a half is 11. So if you want to do the math, you can do the 11 divided by 6.28. Whatever number you get, that's the number that you will cut here. So 
so I didn't really do the math. I, I just eyeball it. But I'm going to do like one and a half. So yeah, I'm going to do one and a half. If you do do the math, and like I said, I'm doing 11. If you do that divided by 6.28, you're going to get like 1.75. So one and three quarters. So if you watch my other video of the bell bottoms, then you should be familiar with this step. So since I'm doing one and a half, that's what I will cut. So it'll be one and a half from this angle and go all the way around. But first you need to make sure that your fabric is long enough to accommodate for your bell bottom. We pull this up six inches. So that means our bell bottom needs to be at least six inches. If you want them longer, you will add. I always add two inches to my bell bottom, which means they're gonna be eight inches. So we need this fabric to be at least eight inches plus the one and a half, nine inches. So I'm going to measure to see if this is at least nine inches on the fold, which it is. I am at nine, I'm at 11 and a half and on this side, it reaches 11 to 12. So I have enough. I'm going to cut my inner circle, which I was doing one and a half. So you would start at the corner, go down one and a half. And then just work your way around using that corner point. Now, I could just take this on top of here to get my other cut. By tracing it. Okay, so now I have my two bell bottoms. The next step is we need to cut our waistband. I know normally for a two T waist, it is normally like 18, 19, but you can always measure the pants. So right here I got nine, and then you times that by two because it's a front and a back, that's 18. So yeah, once you do this a lot, you get to memorize and stuff. So I'm gonna do my waistband at a 18. So what I'm gonna do is fold my fabric. I'm gonna fold my fabric this way. And I need enough to get 18, well half of 18, which is nine. So I need it to be at least nine, okay. So basically I'm gonna cut this at four by nine. So now I have my four on the fold, it's four from here by nine from here. And this will be our waistband. When we open it, it's gonna be a total of four by the 18 that we needed. Our waistband, we have our back pants, we have our front pants, and we have our two bell bottoms. So now it's time to go sew. So first thing I like to do is sew my back piece first, which is the piece that we pin, so that we don't get them mixed up. And where you will sew and you will sew from here down to the crotch right here. So from here to here, do not sew the legs closed. I pinned it so that you guys can see where to sew. If you need to, you can pin yours to sew it also. Especially since it's a stretch fabric. I'm going to sew it a half an inch seam allowance. And we're using stretch fabric. So we always use a zigzag stitch. So we got that sewn. I'm going to do the exact same thing to the front. So from the waist to the crotch. Half an inch seam allowance with a zigzag stitch. should have both of our pants pieces starting to look like pants that's one piece 
and here's my back and I still have my pins in my back so that I don't get them mixed up and that's another piece okay so next what you would do is you have your front and your back pair of pants so so you would go ahead and serge the seam allowance so that you can have a clean finish I have a serger but I'm not going to use my serger at the moment so when I don't use my serger I use my pink and shears for a clean finish so I'm basically just going to trim some of that seam allowance down you can get these pink and shears at walmart hobby lobby joann's or really any craft store and these also help when you're cutting stuff to keep it from fraying so i'm gonna do that to both of my seam allowance that i just sewn like i said you can use your serger if you have a surgery so what we're gonna do next guys is i have my front right here and i have my back so i'm gonna lay them on top of each other right side to right side that means the pretty print on top of the pretty print the side that you sewn with the seam should be on the outside so it's on the outside here and if i flip it it's on the outside so pretty side to pretty side right side to right side whatever you want to call it Pin this side down and then pin this side down. And we're going to go sew and come back. Here's how it'll look. I pinned it on both sides. Okay, so now we sew the sides of our pants. We sew both sides. I went ahead and used my pink and shears on the seam. So you can go ahead and serge yours or use your pink and shears. But next, what we're going to do is sew the crotch area. We're going to sew from here and make sure the two crotch seams line up down to the next pants leg. Okay, so now we have our crotch seam sewn and I did my pink and shoe. Now we have our pants, basically. Let me not move my pin. So we can turn these right side out. And this is what it should look like. some pants we just have to add our bell bottom to it so I got my back still marked so we will grab our bell bottom and we have our pants leg so you will put this on top of the pants leg like that And you're basically just going to pin it to attach it. So pin it all the way around. And then we will sew it. I'm going to pin mine and then I will return. Hey guys, so I'm back. I just finished pinning my second one. So now I have both of mine's pinned and I'm going to show you how they will look. So I have both of mine's pinned on both legs, both of them pinned. And if you flip it, it should look like this. Bottoms. So we need to go and sew these together where we pinned them. So flip it back. To where we can sew where our pins are at now let's go sew these now i'm sewing my bell bottom so what i'm gonna do is put that under i don't know why i i always forget to pin it the opposite way when i'm doing my bell bottoms so that my pins can be on top as you can see they're on the bottom but it's okay you can still feel them and move them around so I'm going to stretch stitch and I'm just stretching the fabric as I go and making sure everything is lining up.
then grab that pen. <laughs> when you see you getting closer to a pen, just grab it. Or you can always repin it and put the pins on the other side to make it easier for you. I don't feel like doing all that, so I'm gonna go with the flow. There we go. I have that that one done. So now we're gonna do the next one. Okay guys, so now that we sewed our bell bottom on, I went ahead and sewed both of mine on and I did my cutting on the seam allowance. So now you should have this. Next, we're gonna do our waistband. And I still have my back mark your waistband here's mine and you're gonna fold it in half like that and we're gonna sew this side closed so go ahead and sew that half in seam allowance stretch stitch You can pin it if you need to. Okay, now that I have mine sewn closed, I'm just going to trim my seam allowance. And then what you're going to do is fold it. Fold it down the opposite way. So line up the seams. And then I like to go ahead and pin it. So we will do that all the way around. After I pin my waistband, this is how it look. We're going to attach it to our pants by sliding it on our pants like that. And I always line up that seam. The seam from the waistband where we sewed the clothes, you should have a seam. I line that up with the back seam, the seam that's in the back of the pants. And once we do that and we sew it, then you will know your front from back. So now we're just attaching them. Moving the pins and attaching it to the pants. Okay, so I have my waistband pinned all the way around. So let's go sew. Move the pins as you go. keeping all the layers lined up. When you come to your seam allowance for your pants, you can sew them to one side or sew them open. Okay, so now I went all the way around. All the way around. And you're gonna cut your seam allowance even. So I'm gonna cut my seam allowance even, cut it down some, and I'll show you the next step. Okay, now I got my waistband sewn and I trimmed it. So now I'm gonna take the pin out the back because I have I know where the back is at now because that seam that we had in our waistband should now line up with the seam that's in the back of our pants. And what I'm gonna do is sew my tag into the back of the pants. I'm aware that most of you guys are beginners, so you don't have a tag, but what you can do is get a piece of ribbon, just cut a small piece of ribbon and sew it on there just so that people can know what's the front and what's the back. Even if you do get it mixed up, it's really not a big deal because the sizing is really not that much of a difference. Now, when it comes to adult size, 
it does matter because adults are more curvy and we have more booty. So that means the booty part, the back is bigger than the front. But when it comes to kids, it really don't matter. So I'm just gonna pin my um pin my label up in here. And I'll show you guys the next step. Okay, so I have my tag sewn in. As you can see, Deja Rose. And our bell bottom is looking like this. Yay. So now what you would do is the last step is to hem the bottom of your pants. To hem them, you would serge all the way around it if you have a serger. Serge all the way around it. Then you would just fold it down at a half an inch all the way around like that and pin it. Once you fold it all the way, fold it at a half an inch and go all the way around, you would just stitch it all the way around. If you're not using a serger, fold it down one time and then fold it down again pin it and you would do that all the way around and so that way the raw edge doesn't show so if you have a serger do one fold if you don't have a serger do two folds to, to hide the raw edge and then your bell bottom is done if you're still confused on him and check out my other bell bottom um tutorial and i think i show exactly how to do it on there thanks for watching